Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of Dr. Kyle Explains, your YouTube channel where we go through GCC science content quickly and easily. Today we're going to be going through ionic bonding, one of my absolutely favourite topics to teach. And so if you haven't already, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, grab a pen and paper and let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, so some key information first of all. So an ionic bond is between a metal and a non-metal. And so what that means is you would have a metal, for example, sodium, and a non-metal such as chlorine, so sodium, chlorine, there's your metal, there's your non-metal, it's an ionic bond. Just to give you another example, you could have maybe calcium, metal, oxygen, non-metal, uh, metal, non-metal, it's an ionic bond. And so for your GCSE, you need to be able to identify what's an ionic bond and what isn't by looking at the elements inside and seeing if there is a metal and a non-metal. So to give you an example of one that wouldn't be, would something be like uh, carbon dioxide, so non-metal, non-metal, it is not an ionic bond. It's something called a covalent bond, which we'll go through in another video. Okay, so metals lose electrons to become positive. So for example, sodium would lose one electron and it would form Na+. Whereas non-metals gain electrons to become negative. So the chlorine would gain an electron, Cr-, and it would become negative. So all metals become positive, all non-metals become negative. Now when that happens, there is an electrostatic force of attraction. Okay, so just to remind you then, an ion is an atom or a particle with a charge, okay? And so what that means is uh, potassium, if it's got a plus sign, therefore it's an ion. If it doesn't have a uh, positive, it's not an ion. Same with chlorine, not an ion, Cr minus, that is an ion, okay? So whenever you see something with a positive or a negative charge, it's an ion. Now, if you're unfamiliar with this, please do go through my other videos and have a look at my video on electronic structure and how to form ions to go into this in a bit more detail. But just as a quick recap, here we have a lithium ion in the middle with the electronic structure. And so uh, the ions uh, on the right hand side. And so here we've got three electrons for lithium. It loses an electron because it's a metal and it forms a plus one ion. Over on this side, we've got the formation of a fluoride ion. So we've got our fluorine here. It gains an electron because it's a non-metal. So it's now got a full outer shell. It's got more electrons than protons. So it becomes minus one. So we've got our positive and we've got our negative. And so they then cancel each other out. They come together with that electrostatic force of attraction. And we form down here what we know as a dot and cross diagram where we've got our um, lithium ion down here and our fluoride ion down here, positive, negative, electrostatic force of attraction, and it forms lithium fluoride. Okay, so what I've done is I've summarized the ions that are forming in the groups that you need to know about most. So group one always form plus one ions. An example here would be potassium forming K plus. Group two lose two electrons. So therefore an example here would be magnesium going to magnesium two plus. So they always form plus two ions. So whenever you have a metal in either group one or group two, if it's in group one, it's a plus one ion. If it's in group two, it's a plus two ion. So in group six and seven, then if we start off at seven, they need to gain one more electron to get a full outer shell. So example here is chlorine going to chloride. It's gained an extra electron, it becomes negative. Group six always form minus two ions. Oxygen's a good example here. It's got six electrons in the outer shell. Oxygen gains two more electrons to get that full outer shell of eight, and it now has two extra electrons, so it's gonna go minus two in charge. And so the important thing to remember is essentially the group tells you what ion is going to form for the first two. So group one and group two form plus one and plus two, and then group six, needs two more electrons, so it's minus two, and group seven needs one more electron, so it's minus one. Just a quick reminder, metals form positive ions, non-metals form negative ions. Okay, so for your GCSE, what you'd need to be able to do is how to describe how uh, lithium fluoride is formed or how ionic bonds are formed. And so here's the um, 
dot and cross diagrams on the right here that we've just gone over and we're now going to describe it in words. Now if you follow this process every single time for your GCSE I am absolutely certain you will get top marks in how to answer this. They're really lovely questions to be able to answer once you get the hang of them. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the formation of the lithium ion. So lithium would lose one electron and it's really important to use this word lose to form the arm Li plus one and get a full outer shell. So we're explaining that that top uh, electron there, the outer electron has been lost and we get a full outer shell for our lithium, it forms our plus one ion, lithium has lost its electron. Always use the two words lose and gain when you're describing about ions and ionic bonding. Okay, so next then, fluorine would gain an electron. And so here it's got seven electrons in the outer shell at the moment. It gains that extra electron, which is going to be coming from uh, your lithium ion. Uh, sorry, your, uh, your uh, lithium atom, forming your lithium ion. And so therefore that extra electron is going to go to fluorine to form fluoride. It now forms a negative ion, so we now have a positive and a negative ion. It gets a full outer shell again, so it's all nice and happy. And so now there is an electrostatic force of attraction between the ions to form the ionic compound lithium fluoride. And so we now have our positive, our negative, they stick together to form lithium fluoride. Now, often in exam questions they will uh, sometimes ask for different things within the question so if you always follow this process talking about losing talking about gaining talking about how many electrons they're going to lose so remember if it's in group one it'll be one electron group two it'll be two electrons how many electrons they're going to gain telling the person uh, or the examiner what ion is actually going to be forming and then finally, that you just say that there's an electrostatic force of attraction between the two ions at the end, you will 100%, I'm certain, get full marks in your GCSE. It's probably a little bit too much information there, but if you always just follow this process, you will get really good marks. Okay, so describe how you would form sodium chloride. So write this down, have a think. We know it's ionic because it's a metal and a non-metal. Have a think, which one's gonna lose, which one's gonna gain? what ion is going to form, what ion is going to form for the non-metal. Why do they come together? What ions are forming? And give the formula for them. And then what kind of attraction do you have between the ions? Have a go and we'll go through the answer in a second. Okay, so hopefully you've said sodium would lose one electron. It's in group one, it's going to lose. It would form the ion Na plus one and obtain a full outer shell. The electrons are transferred over to chlorine and chlorine gains one electron to form the ion Cl- and obtain a full outer shell. There is an electrostatic force of attraction to form the ionic compound sodium chloride. So these questions are often worth about four marks and so I would say your main marks are coming from the fact we say sodium would lose uh, one electron. I would say you are forming the plus one ion, that would be another mark. Chlorine gains one electron, and then you're saying which of the ions are forming. Then again, we always finish off at the end here, electrostatic force of attraction, just in case we've missed something in the mark scheme. Okay, so have a go at this slightly harder one now. Um, again, write this question down, pause the video, think about which one is going to lose, which one is going to gain, what ions are forming, and what kind of force of attraction there is. Go through that process every time in your answers and uh, I'm absolutely certain you will get really good marks in your GCSE. So straight away we know it's an ionic bond because it's a potassium, metal, and oxide, oxygen, non-metal, so therefore that's our indication that we know it's an ionic bond. Pause the video, have a go. Okay, so potassium would lose one electron to form the ion K plus one. It does this because it wants to get a foot out of shell. You need two potassiums to transfer the electrons to the oxygen. And so this one's slightly harder because hopefully you've realised potassium is in group one, whereas oxygen is in group six, so it needs two electrons. And so therefore oxygen gains two electrons to form the ion O minus two and obtain a full outer shell. There is an electrostatic force of attraction to form the ionic compound potassium oxide. And so really quickly, if we just look at the outer shells here, so potassium is 
in group one, so it has one electron in the outer shell. Remember, I'm just drawing the outer shell and nothing else, so I'm well aware there's other electrons underneath there. And then oxygen is in group six, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So we've got one potassium losing, goes over there. We then need another potassium to lose its outer electron, goes over there. And then what we would form is K plus, K plus, O minus two. And so the formula then is K2O for our ionic compound. Okay, so what we've done today then is we've described and explained why atoms bond ionically. And we've represented this with dot and cross diagrams. Thank you very much for watching. Please do go through my other playlists for more GCC science content. Please to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and help the channel grow further. Remember, if you ever need help with the GCC science, Dr. Kyle explains. Thanks very much. Bye bye.